I, you know, my own education was a kind of khalit between what you might call the Ottoman tradition and the Kurdish tradition. Of course, there's a lot of overlap, um, but I wouldn't say it's like a pristine Kurdish, Kurdish madrasa, just that, in the sense that it's exclusive, because we, we also had a, a kind of broader approach. Um, but um, certainly, uh, I started by studying Mughni al-Tulab, which is a commentary on the Isa Hoji of al-Abhari. It's a very, very good commentary by al-Mughni. See, very introductory, but quite comprehensive in, in its introductory nature. Um, my sheikh was not uh, he was not uh, someone who advocated studying the Sulam. Of course, we're not studying about we're talking about Sulam al alum because that's way on the, the other end of the curriculum. But we're talking about the very basic um, poem, the Sulam, which is widely studied. And I'm sure very beneficial. But he he considered it too basic for the kind of level that he wanted us even to start on. Um, and uh, we then studied the. Uh, commentary of Mullah Fanari on the Isa Roji. Now, this is a very, very famous commentary. It's a very difficult commentary on the Isa Roji. Um, and it's interesting that Khalid Rehab in his book, uh, Arabic Logic 1200 to 1800, or whatever it's called, um, which is a, you know, has some beneficial things in it, um, and some good info like this thing I'm about to tell you, uh, is uh, he says that the, actually uh, the, the commentary of Mullah Fanari on the Isa Roji was studied after Qutb al-Din Arasi on the Shamsiya, even though it's a very basic yes. matter, but it's a very advanced uh, it's a very advanced commentary. And that, that's actually a fairly common occurrence. It's not that there's always this kind of, you know, it's always the commentaries on the higher books, because you, could, you can have quite a simple commentary in a higher book and quite an advanced commentary in a lower book. But in any case, that's just an aside. Um, now then, in terms of like the specifically Kurdish curriculum today, and we also studied a work in the Maqulat, the, the, the categories, and that's often related to logical study, although there's a historical debate about whether it belongs to, especially in the West, about whether it belongs to logic or metaphysics. That doesn't really matter uh, at the moment. The, the point is that that's often brought in as a, as a considered a helpful complement to one's logical studies. And it was also a time when we, um, um, when we were kind of introduced to philosophy through that book as well, because it was more broadly talking about philosophy. And of course, because you're talking about substance in, when you're talking about the Makulat, it is kind of already getting into one of the most fundamental philosophical mabahith. In any case, um, then in terms of the more specifically Kurdish curriculum, Today, because the works of Sheikh Abdul Karim and Madaris are uh, very dominant um, in, in the Kurdish world today, um, scholastic world. And so we studied three logical works by Sheikh uh, Abdul Karim and Madaris. Um, and uh, they make up a book called Risa'il al Rahma fil Mantiq al Hikmah. Um, and the most advanced one was called Al Aziza. Now, the Aziza is, an, there's one in modal logic as well. The Aziza is a, an advanced work of logic, which is based on Galambui's Burhan. Um, and that, and, and, and so this has, for example, uh, Al-Qiyas Ghayr Al-Muta'araf, for example. It has, you know, what uh, literally means unfamiliar syllogisms, but what um, Khaled Rahib in his famous book on relational syllogisms uh, well, the, it calls them relational syllogisms, and that's fair enough. Now, it's very interesting, because this <laughs> links back to an earlier point, Molana. Um, as Khaled Ray had notes, I, I, I recommend everyone goes to that introduction of that book and just reads the first three pages. It's enough. Just to get this point, one of the main justifications for you know, throwing out old logic and creating this new modern logic is the supposed inability of Aristotelian logic to deal with certain types of reasoning, like relational logic, which it just doesn't, it's very limited. You know, you've got your categorical propositions and your syllogisms and your, your three or four figures, depending on your madhab. Um, and, um, you know, it can't deal, you know, Aristotle doesn't even deal with hypothetical syllogisms. Um, you know, what we call... Um, Al-Qadiyya al-Matasila, al, 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 
الشرطيه الشرطيه المتصله um, or oil منفصله right so he has a very very basic philosophy now the thing is in the christian med- middle ages they'd actually developed very largely influenced by the islamic world they developed logic to a very very sophisticated degree and the kind of height of it was william of ockham in about the uh, late 14th century and that's when things started to decline that was the kind of high point but they had they had already done istidrak they'd anticipated most of the modern developments in logic that one finds in modern logic and a modern logic ascribes to itself they were actually there and what Khalid Rahib shows in that, in that book is that they were there in our tradition as well relational uh, reasoning was absolutely established you know these are things that were part of modern logic's own justification for founding itself now the reason for that is actually again it's against this progress theory it's because of a decline in logic which had been happening for hundreds of years so that by the time they received logic it was in a very primitive form so they looked at it and they thought all oh, this is very primitive we need to make up something better so they didn't receive a sophisticated version of a logic and that's you know, the the history intellectual history is like that it has these kind of dips and it has these heights and and so on but in any case um so back to what we were specifically discussing so that that book had relational syllogisms in it uh, that's the point it was written by you know one of our element from the 20th century and it's not because he's he was influenced by modern logic um it's because he was part of a tradition and as i said that's based on galambi's burhan um then you know typically one would study the tahdeeb al mantiq um there's khabisi's uh, commentary um there's Dawani's very famous partial commentary. There's obviously Malayasti's commentary. But in any case, so uh, then um, uh, the the Burhan itself, the Burhan al Galambui, is a kind of crowning feature of the Kurdish curriculum. Um, you have commentaries by, for example, Al Qaradaghi, who was actually Sheikh Abdul Karim Madaris's own Sheikh directly um, in the Maqulat. Um, his most important sheikh in in the Aqliyat. Um and um, and and of course you know Khutb al Razi on the Shamsiya is is also uh, absolute bread and butter and and very very important. But what I would say is it's a very sophisticated logical tradition. Inshallah. I don't think it has quite the philosophical content and kind of metaphysical interest broadly speaking that you find in the indian tradition so that's what i'd like you to speak about now molana please uh, th- first of all that's a very fabulous tradition uh, really great to hear about that's w- uh, f- one of the first times i've actually uh, i've heard aspects of it but it's really great to hear that alhamdulillah from yourself um i mean uh, th- th- there's there's a few things here i mean um, uh, first of all uh, in, in the late classical period um uh, Mir Sayyid Jurjani, like 1400s uh, Christian era onwards. So the writings uh, traverse uh, multiple disciplines within a single work. You find that, especially within logic works or makulat. Yeah. Um, so, for example, um, let, let's take logic, for example. So like Mir Sayyid's contributions in logic, they don't only confine themselves to the technicalities of modal reasoning. But what you do begin to find here, 1400s uh, onwards, is that they often prioritize like uh, they often prioritize in-depth discussions of philosophical issues that were raised in the early sections of the um, uh, the logic manuals so uh, there's a shift of emphasis here um of the the the, the broader you could say intellectual uh, developments of arabic logic in that era but what ends up happening here with with, with the frangi mahal now is that they really developed that so 1400s, uh, 500 years on, uh, there's developments taking place and then it reaches this amazing peak where you get to a point where very subtle and deep points um, are incorporated into logic manuals that were, that were, that, that, that are, you know, um, r- relating to um, Kalam and relating to, you'll, you'll find discussions related to, 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 to Wahdatul Wujud and uh, uh, issues relating to the ilm of Bari Ta'ala, the ilm of Allah, and uh, ontology, discussions of ontology you'll find in there, discussions of metaphysics come into there. And, it, and, 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 and um, we, we remember in, in the Mullah Hassan, um, uh, Mullah Hassan Farangi Mahalli actually mentions, we, we're reading a, a manual of logic and he's, 
he brings up the discussion of the ilm of Allah and then he says uh, we're going to mention the mazahib the philosophers the sufis the mutakallimin and then we're going to we're going to we're going to attest to what's what are the correct positions and we're going to falsify the false ones so uh, you can see that this is happening in a logic manual so what this is indicative of Sayyidi is uh, and, 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 and I'm actually borrowing here from uh, uh, Mullah Abdul Bari Farangi Mahalli Rahimahullah who's a later Farangi Mahalli scholar and yeah. he, he, he talks about there being a division in the logic manuals and uh, he says uh, although they're all books of logic but they're actually two separate funun and two separate disciplines one is Mantik Sazaj or what we would term as like simple logic, which just mentions the qawaid of, of logic. Yeah. And then you have mantik mamzuj, which is mixed logic. And mm-hmm. what, what these, what, now although these works in mantik mamzuj are, are classified as textbooks of logic itself, but the discussions that they contain are far more diverse. So yeah. just within the, the, the mantik sazaj or the simple logic, which conveys the essential objectives of logic, uh, in, in the Farang Imal tradition, they would teach the Sughra and Kubra of Mir Sayyid Jurjani, which were two Farsi primers. Uh, then they would move on to the Sharh tah- uh, Tahdib al-Mantik or the Sharh Tahdib, which is Mullah Yazdi's commentary on Alamat of Tazani's Tahdib al-Mantik, respectively. Then they would teach the Sharh al-Shamsiya, or also known as the Qutbi, uh, along with Mir Qutbi, which is... Uh, Mir Sayyid Jurjani's hashi on that. So that's Imam Katibi, Qutbuddin al Razi, and Mir Sayyid Jurjani, respectively. This would be your Mantik uh, Sazaj or your simple logic. From here, they'd move on into Mantik Mamzuj, what would be mixed logic. And for this, was you know, there, there was a lot going on here because they would essentially move into uh, the hashi of Mir Zahid, uh, Ala Mullah Jalal, Ala Tahzib al Mantik. So Mir Zahid al Harawi's super commentary on. Mullah Jalaluddin Dawani's commentary on the Tahzib al-Mantik. So uh, that would be essentially three works you're studying uh, together. And then they would teach uh, Mir Zahid's gloss on the Risala Qutbiyah or Risala Fit Tasawwari wa Tasdiq uh, mm-hmm. by Qutbuddin al-Razi. So Mir Zahid's, uh, 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 you could say, Hashia uh, on the Risala Qutbiyah. And they would teach this along with a, a gloss of Mullah Ghulam Yahya which is, uh, you'll find it uh, around, around uh, on the margins of, of, of the Risala Qutbiyah. Um, <clears throat> then uh, finally, they would move into the world of Sulam al And uh, although there's over 100 commentaries uh, on Sulam al glosses and super commentaries, but they chose three. And the reason they chose, they chose these three was because these have a, uh, they have a very curricular nature to it. And uh, essentially, access to these three would give you access to all of the rest. Uh, and, and they were essentially Mullah Hassan, Frangi Mahalli, uh, that of Qadi Mubarak, Gop- Gopamawi, uh, who was one of the earliest uh, to write on the, uh, the, 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 the Sulam al Ulum, and then finally Mullah Hamdullah, uh, Frangi Mahalli. So these were, uh, and these were respectively known as Mullah Hassan, Qazi Mubarak, and Hamdullah. So that's where they would br- bring this all together, and that's particularly just with regards to logic. And then they obviously had a philosophy as well, and they were doing uh, Ulum Riyadiya as well. Um, and and there was so much going on. So essentially, that's what's going. Uh, that that's that's the 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 the, the curriculum uh, within the f- the original Frangi Mahal. Then when the Khairabadis came along, they really uh, developed the tradition further. So they added a lot more additions. Um, whether that was in philosophy itself, or, or or whether in logic, they they brought in a lot more additions. And um, uh, for example, Alufukul Mubin of Mir Bakir Damad, uh, the Tajreed. Um, you know, Hawashi Qadima wa Jadida, they brought this into the curriculum. Um, and in logic, they brought in works of uh, Alama Fazli Haq Khairabadi himself, um, you know, and Fazli Imam Khairabadi himself, and the super commentaries on that. So there was a lot more going on in that period, but it was really, subhanAllah, it was like the peak of, you could say, the. Um, uh, intellectual tradition, at least for in South, uh, South Asia. So, Alhamdulillah. 